And away from that conversation about mobile money, now let's talk health. And today we're discussing our uh, well, heart failure. And so we're talking about cardiovascular diseases. And according to studies, it has indicated that cardiovascular diseases are the most common uh, causes of death globally. And of course, when it comes to sub-Saharan Africa, it says that it will eventually by 2035 take over from infectious diseases as the most common causes of death in the country. And so then, of course, we're talking heart failure as well. Now, the Ghana Medical Association back in 2013 mentioned that it was at an all-time high when it came to cardiovascular diseases uh, causing death amongst adults maybe 30 years and above at a certain point. And so we're asking that really, what is the problem? What are we getting wrong? And what can be done to ensure that uh, heart failure remains a thing of the past, or at least the number of cases resulting from heart failure would reduce? Reduce. And I have Dr. Borte in the studios with me. He's a medical director at the Health Net Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? Doing very well. Good? Yeah. Okay, you need to explain this to me. I know that heart failure comes under cardiovascular diseases. So let's first talk about cardiovascular diseases and then we can narrow it down to heart failure. What really are those and what causes them? Well, cardiovascular diseases are um, any form of uh, pathology that comes to the, the heart and it's um, blood vessels that blood is supplied through. So you have your circulatory system with your heart as the center mm. or the pumping station. Blood is pumped through these vessels. If there's any problem with the heart itself, um, or if there's any problem with, with the vessels through which it passes, maybe if there is resistance at the other end or peripheral end where blood cannot flow out, mm. then there's likely to be what we call hypertension. Okay. Greater too much pressure in the blood or in the vessels, and that's what we call hypertension. So hypertension becomes one of the commonest form of cardiovascular diseases. After that, we also have the heart organ itself or the valves in the heart. You can have valvular heart diseases, mm. you can have hypertension, you can have a lot of other conditions that may um, be grouped together as um, cardiovascular disease. Sometimes infections even happen in the heart as well. The heart valves can get um, infections, what we call myocarditis, endocarditis, or rheumatoid heart disease, or rheumatic heart diseases. So it's a group of things, and these things can eventually lead to the heart failing. So heart failure basically is actually an aftermath of many possible yeah, possible things that um, or many, many possible pathologies that come into the heart and then it finally ends with um, the heart failing i see now i mean it says that it's at an all-time high and it's even surprising that we're seeing very young people who are suffering yeah. from cardiovascular diseases especially from heart failure mm -hmm. as well what really are we doing wrong what are the causes I think there's been a lot of paradigm shift in our culture, in the way we do things, um, the stresses of today. Um, much more younger people are in executive positions and uh, um, are dieting, exercising, all these things, there's been a lot of change. I mean, I think back then, uh, forefathers were eating more of things from the farm from the directly, farm. Yeah, so you know, produce. a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. But now everything is on the fast, everything is on the fast move, so we just grab anything, sugars are consumption of sugars are on the on the rise yeah um, a lot of people are becoming more obese even our kids today are becoming we have a lot of childhood obesity mm -hmm. so all these things culminate in the heart i'm having to from to have to having to work against a higher pressure or higher resistance out there and if if the heart should overwork against pre pressure or resistance it will get to a point it will start failing mm. now the heart's main purpose is to pump out blood it's it's supposed to be a pump so it receives blood and pumps it. Right. So yeah. if we say the heart is failing, then basically either it's pumping out of blood or receiving blood, it's not the best. Mm -hmm. Or the, it, the fraction of blood that it pumps out in a beat, which is adequate to supply to the body, is not enough as a result of some of these underlying fact, um, um, factors that we have mentioned. So the person's heart would be, begin to fail. But commonest cause amongst them is hypertension. How do you know you have hypertension? <laughs> I mean, un until you go to the hospital, of course, and it's diagnosed. But I'm sure there's a lot. A lot signs. of times, people don't know. I mean, a case in point is a man I saw last week who just came to the eye clinic, and mm -hmm. the eye, eye doctor, um, the opt uh, optician was like, "Oh, doc, I need to see this pe person. The blood pressure is 190." The mm -hmm. man was like, "I'm never aware." So I checked again; it was actually more than that. And the reason why. And the, the thing he was having was what we call hypertensive retinopathy. So the optician realized that at the back, the man couldn't, he couldn't see well. Okay. So he looked into the eye with what we call the fundoscopy and realized there was a lot of hemorrhages on the retina. Hmm. So the man didn't know. 
it wasn't having headaches or anything some or maybe palpitations as well that's say, oh maybe yeah. there's something wrong but it was through the eye clinic that was detected that the blood pressure was high and so he came and then we okay. managed to bring it down and yesterday coming for review we checked again the blood pressure had come from 220 it was around 140. what now. should it be what should be the level um the the arbitrary normal we say is 120 80 oh, wow. but actually it's a range okay so i mean if you haven't hit anything be beyond 140 90 uh, we say you are not hypertensive. Okay. But again, even 130, 90, we tell you be careful, be be very vigilant and watch for waiting. Or oh, you need to be vigilant on your blood pressure. 130, 90 means mm. that you are most likely becoming prehypertensive, and so you you get there. So um, within a week of this man just getting the blood pr pressure controlled, he came for the next review, and interestingly, there's been improvement okay. in the site. So um, you wouldn't know if you don't check. Okay. You don't have to wait for symptoms or a certain uh, symptom to show up before you see that I'm hypertensive. Mm. There are people to who say that, oh, when my BP goes up, I know. I want to wait for this feeling. Sometimes the time you're waiting for the feeling is when the complication may be arising or it would have thrown you into one of the many complications of hypertension, including strokes. I see. And heart attacks. Okay, now this is, okay, strokes and heart attacks <laughs> and heart failure. Now all of these are intertwined. Yes, there, there is a link. I mean, I, I'm sure as I'm speaking, people are saying, so now he's talking about heart failure. Yeah. And they also and have the heart attack. Exactly. And they also talk, talk about cardiac arrest. It can be very confusing. Oh, oh, are they the same thing? I mean, there are subtle differences between them. Um, let me take it. Heart, heart failure, as I'm talking about, I would, I'll put it this way, is a problem with pumping out and receiving in. So it's, okay. it's a pumping problem. Um, when it comes to um, heart attack, it is actually a circulation problem. Circulation problem in terms of the heart itself not getting blood supply as a result of its main artery that is feeding the heart gets blocked either by um, plaques in your v blood vessels or a clot in the, okay. in, the, in the blood vessels supplying the heart. So the heart doesn't get fed mm. with oxygen and nutrients and it begins to, we say it has been attacked, it can't function. Cardiac arrest has to do with, let me put it, the beat problem. So a pumping problem, beat problem, and then circulation problem. The cardiac mm -hmm. arrest means that, you know, our heart is myogenic. It's, it's, you don't control it. It's mm -hmm. just beating. Mm -hmm. There is an electrical, if you put electricity to it, you see that it's an electrical activity of the heart. I see. When the electrical activity of the heart fails, then it means that there will be no beating at all or irregular beating. And in the case of cardiac arrest, if intervention is going gotten within minutes, the person can lose their life. Okay. So somebody can have a heart attack, but... Ha, not you cardiac still, arrest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there are subtle connections, but there are subtle differences. One can lead to the other, one can lead to, but there are differences amongst them. Okay. So when it comes to heart failure, then let me know. You're saying that it can only be detected if you see a doctor, but then maybe whilst you're home, there could be a few things that could happen to you. Yes. Indeed. When, so when you have heart failure, um, anybody with heart failure would have certain underlying conditions already. The person is most likely to be hypertensive. The person is most likely to also have certain chronic diseases like oh. um, diabetes or the person may have may something who has used alcohol over a very long time, tobacco and all these things. Okay. As I said, heart failure is just um, a complication of certain conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when your heart is failing, I mean, from the premise that I, I indicated that the heart is not pumping mm -hmm. out the blood it's getting or it's not receiving what it's supposed to be receiving because either the heart muscles are weak um, to expand to receive okay. or uh, uh, too stiff to mm -hmm. contract out. Now what happens is that if the, the left heart, for example, we have the left heart and the right heart, if the yeah. left part of the heart is, is failing, that means that the blood goes into your lungs and has to go back to the heart for, to be pumped out. It cannot go because it is not being received well okay. or it's not pumped out well. So what happens is that there will be fluid congestion in your lungs. It is hot, but then the ex oxygen that has been taken from your lungs to go to the heart to be pumped is not going. So there will be oh. blood staying or a stay back in your lungs. Do and you feel pain? You may feel pain, but what you would actually what you would actually be feeling would be shortness of breath. So you realize that you are not as though you may think you are asthmatic or somebody will see it and mm -hmm. say that, hey, you, are you having asthma? Yeah. The system may look like asthma, but it is not asthma necessarily okay. especially the person hypertensive the person is quite advanced in age and who is not a known hypertensive all of a sudden start having difficulty in breathing mm -hmm. most likely chances are that the person is having heart failure and um so the person may be <laughs> Oh. That kind of thing may be one of the features. Another thing is that the person may have something called orthopnea in the sense that 
sleeping becomes a problem. So the person prefers to sit down and sleep. I so see. with a person who has um, left heart failure, um, lying down, um, supine, or being in a prone position is very difficult. So they, they lie down and they want to sit up again. So you see that they are, they, you go home and their pillows are like four. Yeah. He prefers, that, prefers to have four pillows and lay inclined in the bed. And that's what makes them feel comfortable. For other people, the heart failure could even be on the right side of the heart. Mm. When it's on the right side, it means that um, the blood from uh, the lower extremities coming up is also not being well received because the right heart is, is, is failing. Okay. In that case, what you can see is that the person may have um, swollen feet. Mm -hmm. The person's abdomen may also be swelling. What we call aside, you can have fluid sitting in the abdominal cavities okay. and swollen feet. That is not to say that any form of swollen feet is... Um, the same quantum of, of uh, heart failure. Okay. It could be kidney, it could be any other problem. Um, fluid in the abdomen could even stand for liver problems. But it, again, it's for a doctor to decipher which is which. Mm. All right. So um, essentially, with heart failure, the commonest thing you would see might be difficulty in breathing. <sighs> okay. Okay, and, and, and how can it be treated? Because immediately you get to the hospital, can you even, you know, survive a heart failure? Yes, place? yes. Well, a lot oh, you of, can. I can tell you a lot of people are working about heart failure. So it's not fatal? No, heart failure is not fatal like, as quickly as um, cardiac arrest or heart attack. Okay. I mean, in terms of fatality, fatality rate, cardiac arrest can be faster, followed by, I mean, cardiac um, my heart attack, you have four, five, six hours. Oh, um, to survive. Chance, yes. Okay. Uh, for intervention, to, but cardiac arrest has to be done. That's cardiac is when you see all these yeah, clear, exactly. clear, clear, okay. the defibrillators and these things being used. And then with heart failure, a lot of people have heart failure. Some of them, they have what we call cardiomyopathies. Their heart is so enlarged yeah. and flabby. It's not pumping well. It's dilated and can't pump well. Some mm -hmm. too, the heart muscles are so um, 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 hypertrophied or very muscular and stiff that they cannot also pump well. So okay. there's poor supply. The way to manage them depends on what kind of thing you have. Again, doctors will run a lot of tests. They will do echocardiograms, may do angiograms and those things. And then depending on what you have, the essentially the, the quickest thing that, you, you, that doctors will really do, the, sympt the symptomatology you exhibit is actually because of fluid over Fluid, mm -hmm. or fluid retention, either in your lungs or in your legs. So they give what, what uh, the lemma call water pills. Okay. Water pills are given so that you may have to urinate more often. Ah. And uh, again, for the people who may have heart failure, as they, I'm saying that they cannot sleep well, they have to sit and sleep, they, they also realize that in the night they urinate more often. So, and it's not, it's because <laughs> the fact that you urinate more often too doesn't mean okay. you have heart failure. <laughs> Because but I thought they said when you drink too much water, that is why. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That nothing is clad in iron. Okay. So, um, but when the person has difficulty in breathing, and also every now and then has to wake up in the night, it could be if it's a man, a man with age, I'm having a prostate problem. But if you have a heart, um, attack, a heart failure issues, the body would want to get um, rid of rid water. Of okay. Yeah. So the other way is to make sure that we're giving medication that gets you to urinate even more often to wow. decongest either the lower extremities or the lungs as well. That is not the only mode of management. Okay. There are so many other things that, right. that are hospital-based. But, but this use. is the commonest. The commonest. So basically, I should eat well? Yes, so we say I that should. to prevent the heart failure, therefore, um, prevent the underlying conditions. Uh, if you are diabetic, make sure your sugar is well controlled. If mm. you are hypertensive, make sure that your hypertension is well controlled. Exercise, we say, improve circulation all the time. Not vigorous. You don't have to be like uh, being the boxing ring or something, yeah. but at least adequate exercise to keep your heart healthy. Um, fruits and vegetables, again, we say that these are more healthy okay. than all the meats that we chew all mm. the time. These are things that we can do. And then also, um, Make sure that you doing your regular checks. Um, in How a year. often should I? I say that I mean quarter, 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 quarter. I would say quarter, quarter in a year. At least once. Check your heart. Check your kidneys. Check your okay. liver. Everything. These are things you you'll be able to make informed decisions on your health. I see. Anyway, so I hope that you have been educated on the issue concerning heart failure. And if you've noticed any symptoms, you need to rush and see. A medical professional as soon as possible. You can probably even get in touch with Dr. Botte as well. Uh, you want to drop maybe a contact or yes. okay. So, go ahead. Um, 055 142 0412. We'll take it again. 055 142 
0412. All right. So Dr. Botte is the medical director at the Health Net Medical Center. And hopefully he'll join us again another time to discuss something very pertinent concerning your health as well. So thank you so much. Welcome. For joining us.